can you not say that I have received convertible foreign exchange? Well, practically there is a difficult uh, argument to take because one, you are not able to trace the source of funds, funds are fungible, the source of funds, where it will come and what are the source. It's quite possible the money or the funds lying with the custodians may be out of the profits made on the sale of some securities which were held by him earlier and therefore he's paying out those funds. So, in uh, uh, the way, the, uh, in the practically you will end up paying tax, sorry, you will end up treating this as an exempt service and therefore lose the benefit of export of service. Serial number 4 was subscription to government securities and therefore what should be the nature of the, of the transaction? Well, both of the groups said that these are investment activities, this was again discussed by Diwan and Pramani and they are saying this should not be liable for tax. I would like to give a slightly different view. To my mind, when any entity, these are essentially called primary, uh, primary dealers who subscribe or who participate in, uh, in an auction to, uh, of government securities, I will say that these are really advancing loans or giving loans or advances where the consideration is received in interest. Because what is a government security? You also, also have a government securities act of 2006 and it says government securities means a security created or issued by the government for the purpose of raising a public loan or for any other purpose. So the treasury bills or the GSEX which we talk really are actually government, uh, these are actually uh, in the nature of loans advanced to the, uh, advanced to the government. Now, so the question which will arise is that if I am if we are saying goods includes securities, then how come I am saying that there is a liability for payment of tax when I subscribe to a government security? And that is where I want to highlight an interpretation. Then when I give a loan to the government for which I get a government security, that is advancing a loan. But the security which I have now got, the document which I have got, is tradable. And when I trade it on the exchange, it becomes trading in goods. Therefore, creation of the security is advancing a loan, but trading in that security is a transaction of trading in goods. And therefore, if, if the answer to serial number 4 will be, it is in the nature of transaction of loan. Serial number 5 is a trading in goods, and therefore, not a service. Just the case of a debenture. If I go and subscribe to a debenture issue, I am giving loan to, uh, to an entity. If I buy the debenture in the market, it becomes trading in goods because when that when I applied for the debenture, there was no security. The security was created when I advanced the loan, and then there was a trade in the security which was got created. So the first transaction of subscription does not uh, is not in the nature of an investment. It becomes in the nature of a loan, and therefore it may have an impact so far as your uh, 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 I mean on your uh, treatment of the services or your if you are an uh, NDFC. Will, uh, to the extent of your central credit. Trading in government securities is a transaction of trading, trading in goods, and therefore the implications will be as explained. Serial number 9. We have about 40 more minutes. Very good. Excellent. So we're going very fast. Nine, perfect. I'm not, I'm not sure that I'm so clear. You're perfect. Your underrated is perfect, sir. Perfect. Thank perfect. you. Good skill and good mastery on the subject. I am not sure about uh, how much confusion I am creating. No. So, the risk is on that side, the risk is not for me. <laughs> the next is uh, serial number 9. Serial number 9, there are different aspects to this uh, transaction. One is that Hackers Limited is selling packaged or customized software. I am jumbling those issues in a way. Some of these softwares are supplied in one media, some of these are supplied electronically and what is the liability when this packet software is supplied. We have the decision of the Supreme Court in the case of Tata Consultancy Services where the Supreme Court has said that packet softwares are goods and therefore the sale of packet software will be in the nature of transaction or transfer of title in goods and therefore not liable for payment of service tax. The question arises that what will happen if you are allowing download of the software in electronic form? I am selling a software, but instead of giving on a CD or a media, I am just giving you a password to download it. Will it, be, will it continue to be goods or will it become service? The education guide says it becomes a service, you have to pay tax. Of course, they are coming from somewhere from the background, they are under the customs law. When the software is downloaded electronically, it is not goods and therefore you need not pay, uh, uh, you need not pay customs duty. Therefore, they say you should pay service tax. To my mind, 
uh, even when software is downloaded electronically, they continue to be goods. The media or the medium through which any uh, asset or anything is supplied to you will not alter the nature of the transaction, and therefore they should constitute transactions in goods only, not liable for payment of service tax. Of course, the department will take a contrary view. Sorry, I might not. Uh, there is an advance moving on this. There it is. A, it's a service. Microsoft. Microsoft. Recently? Okay. Uh, my apologies. I have missed that. But the logic is that will the medium of any transaction or will the medium change the nature of the transaction? What happens in the software? In the case of a software which I get on a CD. Again, when I am getting on a CD, I will load on the computer. To the extent of the CD or the copy on the computer, I am a owner. I can do whatever I want with it, of course, subject to my license and agreement. Same way, instead of a CD, I will download it through the internet. I am still entitled to do it. The same amount of things, I can still treat it to be an, uh, an owner. And therefore, to my mind, that uh, so the license copy is concerned, it is a transaction of <coughs> sale only and should not be a service. The second aspect is that there are certain transactions where there are software development to be undertaken and this when this software development is to be undertaken these are uh, uh, there are certain base software which are required to be used so there could be a base software and uh, for this base software this uh, may be first supplied by the customer or it may be supplied by hackers that is the situation we are talking about so the, uh, the customer may supply a base software and hacker in India <coughs> will develop a software around it that is one situation or you may have a situation where hacker himself supplies the base software and you do some development around it. Now what would be the nature of the transaction here and how you need to treat this from the nature of the transaction and also from the point of acceptance and the valuation. Friends, before I just come into this, let me just also give you a background. So this is a very common kind of a transaction in many, uh, many, uh, uh, for many kinds of software. But you need to distinguish this at uh, between them. There are certain softwares which require limited customization. Let me take a huge software like a, uh, like a SAP, you know, or like the Oracle SAP on banking, I mean, Pinnacle or something which they call it. So, Pinnacle is an inversion system, but whatever. These are standard software. They are like huge, they are massive softwares. And then you would always, you always get given order for buying the software, say for one crore, and customization. For another, say, another two crores. The, the cost of customization usually is more than the uh, price of the software. Now, in this software, uh, the customization is really, in a way, installation, or it is really, or in a way, configuring the software. So, in a SAP software, the software has every feature. When you want customization, your service provider does not go and change the software. He will only on off some switches. To say some modules are activated, some modules are deactivated, some reports are uh, 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 you know uh, 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 um, drafted by taking some boxes to say okay give these columns, don't give these columns, and then configure your system. Then you also integrate your system by saying that okay when you do a uh, uh, invoice, it needs to flow into these databases so that these kind of reports are given and things like that, or integrate the material management module with your financial uh, financial uh, uh, accounting uh, module and things like that. So in this case, really. What, what is really there is that there is a supply of a base software and there is a customization. Such a transaction typically we treat it as two transactions. One, sale of the base software and the customization or an ancillary activity. Such a, again, supply of the software will be a group 3 service on which, uh, sorry, uh, will be a sale. So, uh, development of the software uh, customization will be a group 3 service. The second aspect is that there could be certain development where the base software becomes a small part of the larger software. Say you want to develop in your office a complete office management system, which may cost you say 25 lakh rupees. For that, you may buy from the market a SQL software, which is actually the database, and you give it to your developer, and he develops the base. But then your software is very small. Your final package is very huge. If this is a situation where the software is becoming part and parcel of the final software and this transaction may have been treated slightly differently than the first one which I gave. So again, the software development, software customization uh, transaction which we are going to look at has to be seen in light of what is the size of the software, what are the activities, what happens to the software, does it, does it lose its identity and things like that. 
and then it will determine what is the nature of the transaction. So this is the, the two aspects which I wanted to highlight. If I can quickly go through this uh, uh, the, the uh, questions. Coming to question number three, the gross amount charge liable to service charge is a contract for software development where the base software is provided by the client. Now in my, to my mind, that even when the base software is provided by the client, and I take this case of a second uh, situation where you are giving a small software and you developing a big uh, software around it, even then, the value of that particular software does not get does not need to be added to the value of the software or the uh, development activity which is under default to be undertaken. Of course, recently we have had a uh, Delhi uh, large institution of Diana Builders where we have said that uh, consideration obviously has to be in kind or it uh, sorry it has to be in money or it can be in kind, but even if it is in a, in a non monetary consideration, that has to be consideration or in a by itself. So when I supply a software, it's not a consideration I'm getting, it is actually something which I'm giving as a condition of my contract that I'll give you the software and you develop something around it. And therefore I'm not really passing in the property in this my base software to my service provider or to the software developer. He's supposed to work around it, develop a large software around it and return it to me. And therefore that is not required to be added. The gross amount charge continues to be the value which is contracted, which is required to be paid for the development of the software. The question is, Will the base software, uh, uh, sorry, will this answer change if the base software was supplied by hackers to United Limited themselves instead of buying from outside? To my mind, the answer does not change, but you need to, in such a case, carefully look at the uh, wordings of the contract. Your contract should constitute two transactions one, first the sale of the base software, and then taking that base software and developing a larger software around it. Because many times we find that there are many companies which want to structure these transactions to save taxes. The base software will cost you, uh, will be subjected to VAT at say for example 5%. If they don't get approved credit, they don't want to pay, pay 12.5% of the full software. So they say you first the base software will return it to you, you develop the software around it. So then you need to look at the conditions of the contract, it should constitute two separate transactions and in that case it will fall outside the purview of, uh, of the VAT law. Now this was discussed by uh, uh, team Mastane and they felt that there could be multiple options. One is on the whole transaction, including the value of the software, you pay service tax. Some people in the group felt you pay VAT on the whole transaction. And third was that you pay both the taxes VAT as well as service tax. I feel that the better way to treat this would be that you ensure <coughs> that your agreement and your contract is appropriately worded, constituting the two, two separate transactions, pay VAT on the supply of the base software. To the extent of the development or the customization, you pay service tax, and that should be quite acceptable uh, to the authority. The next is taxability of services provided to clients located outside India. When the services are uh, uh, provided to uh, uh, customers outside, in clients outside India, Guru Nasrani felt that it should get covered under clause 4A, which is this software which is required to be given to develop, and therefore. Uh, the place of provision will be outside India. I will again, I feel that again that differs. When it's that SAP software, which is a huge software, and I need to really go to the site and then configure, I could also take a stand that these are goods which are required to be uh, uh, you know, provided by the service recipient to do some work on it, and there could be a possibility of taking an argument that this is good for you. However, in a base software of the line we are discussing here, where it forms part and parcel of, of a larger software, I think the whole software development is a Rule 3 service, it's not a Rule 4 service, and therefore you have to apply the rules of uh, the provision of Rule 3, recipient is, you may be entitled to the benefit of an test form. The next is taxability of services provided to clients located outside India, service from India as well as on site. Friends, this is also covered at serial number 12. I will cover this when we come to 12. I'll just park it for the time being. Let's go to serial number 10. Serial number 10, again there is a background to this. The question has been is in the context of sponsorship services. Sponsorship services are liable under the reverse charge. And therefore, what are the transactions which are liable on which there is a liability for payment of uh, service tax? The intention over here was to generate some element of uh, discussion also for the periods prior to the negativeness where we had a definition of sponsorship which is not there now on the statute. So how do you treat sponsorship? Now, 
If I may just quickly run through the definition. Is there in the paper book? <coughs> you know, I mean, I'll just read out. I'll just explain. Once I read out, I'll explain the difficulty which is arising. Sponsorship includes naming an event after a sponsor, after the sponsor. Which page is that? Not there. Is there? This naming an event after the sponsor, displaying the sponsor's company logo or trade name, trading name, giving the sponsor exclusive or priority booking rights, sponsoring prizes or trophies for the competition, but does not include any financial or other support in the form of religion, so we can ignore that for the time. Only go to the first step. The question is, look at the first example which I have given. I have gone to Mumbai Credit Association, I have booked a platinum uh, box or something, whatever you have, that priority or VIP box. I am getting a priority booking line. Will whatever I have given to Mumbai Credit Association, will this be a sponsorship, a, a transaction of sponsorship or not? Now this is what is happening. Here is a situation where you have not gone and sponsored an event, you have not sponsored a credit match or a match. You have gone and only said, I'll get a priority booking, right? But since I'm booking that platinum box, I can put my company logo over there on a big board. I get priority booking rights to 100 tickets. Will I be a sponsor or not? The way I'm, the department says, yes, you're getting priority booking rights, therefore you're a sponsor. I am interpreting this, or that's a, a, a submission I'm making before you, that all these four activities, can take place only when you sponsor an event. They cannot survive in isolation. So for example, when I say sponsorship includes naming an event after the sponsor, which is the person who is sponsoring, displaying the sponsor's company logo or trade name. Can I have a situation where I allow someone to display the company logo or trade name? If it is by itself, it may want an advertisement or sale of space. Therefore, this has to be in the context of a person who has named the event, or for, uh, who sponsored the event as such. Only then the second uh, link comes, after the second comma. Giving the sponsor exclusive of priority booking rights. If I give anyone an exclusive of priority booking rights, here, it, I don't think it can cover as a sponsor. It has to be only the person who's, after whose name the event has been named. Or sponsoring, Prices or trophies for a competition, again, in relation to a person who is sponsoring the event. So my suspicion is that all these four different activities, naming an event, displaying his name, giving him uh, priority booking rights, or sponsoring prices, can take place only when you are sponsored an event. If I get only priority booking right, or if I get given only the right of displaying my, public, uh, my name, when I am, when there is a match going on, or only uh, uh, you know sponsoring a prize. I submit that this is not a sponsorship or does not get covered in <coughs> the sponsorship services. If you look at the circulars issue in 2006 and 2010, 2010 was earlier there was an exemption for exclusion for sporting events. The exclusion was deleted in 2010. At both the times, also they have clarified sponsorship in relation to events. They have talked about events, events, and events. Now suddenly the department is coming and said. You are getting priority booking rights, you are not a sponsor really, but you are getting priority booking rights, pay under reverse charge. You are getting a board display, pay under reverse charge. Then every person who puts his board on the boundary will become a sponsor. Why is that not sale of space? That is sale of space. Priority booking rights may be taxable today, may not be taxable yesterday. So here, and this has created some difficulty, and that's why here my submission is the way sponsorship was boarded. Or is worship, it has to be only in relation to a person who is sponsoring an event. If you don't sponsor an event, you are not falling under the sponsorship. Now, sponsorship could be on different kinds. You could sponsor an event. Yes, I can easily say that I can accept that sponsorship. What happens when you sponsor someone for, say, for example, if you sponsor someone for an education or a training? I sponsor you for this educational course. I sponsor you for this training session. Is this a sponsorship? 
you might still say it's a sponsorship. Why? I'm just giving you these examples because the department is now taking a very, you know, a very different kind of view. I'll, I'll just come to that. What happens if I say that I will provide training to you without any event? So I like that you have potential, you are a super uh, cricketer, I will arrange a cricket course for you. And then I say, but whenever you go to the field, you put my name and you go by company name and go. Am I sponsoring? To my mind, that is not sponsoring. I can understand sponsoring an event will be a sponsoring. When I sponsor you for an educational seminar, an educational course, or a training, se training session, it's an event taking place, and I say you go and pay your fees, you might even buy certain special images and say I'm sponsoring. Providing training, arranging for training, I feel you cannot treat it as a sponsor. And slowly we are finding the department is diluting and saying all these kinds of transactions are transactions of sponsoring. And therefore they are living or they are attempting to living tax. So let's look at also the definition of sponsorship. Black's Law Dictionary, of course, not very helpful. One who voluntarily intervenes for another without being requested to do so. Which may not be very helpful, but we have the Oxford English Dictionary. It says, a person or an organization who pays for or contributes to the cost of an event or broadcast in return for advertising. So again, they are saying, a person who pays or contributes for the cost of an event or broadcast in return for advertising. So again, there is an event which they are becoming. It also says a person who pledges a uh, sum of money to a charity or another person who has participated in a fundraising event. Again, someone in relation to an event. So, to, I mean, my only submission here is that the department slowly is trying to put every kind of uh, uh, contribution and uh, you know give the color of put to every kind of contribution as a sponsorship, and they say you will really tax on it. For example, in a, for a charitable organization. In the souvenir, annual souvenir, you give 10,000 rupees. On the last page, they put your details of the company or compliments from so and so. They will now say this sponsorship because you are sponsoring that souvenir. My my submission being that it has to be in the nature of uh, uh, in, the, in the nature of an event. Only those should be covered. Others will not be covered. And I think this was discussed by a group uh, Vimane and Parmane. Uh, in the first uh, case study, there was a payment to. Mumbai Cricket Association, 1.5 crores of paid in 2000 for sponsoring cricket matches for 15 years. You got occupancy uh, or rather not was paid in 2000. This was an agreement for occupancy rights of the platinum boxes or the VIP boxes. You also get priority booking rights for some tickets and you can put your big company's uh, name. Now again, uh, both the groups have said this is not taxable because the payment was made prior to uh, in 2000. <laughs> Under the reverse charge taxes payable only when the payment is made. Although you might be amortizing this over the period of uh, years, uh, or 15 years in books of accounts, there is no payment made, there is no liability. That is absolutely correct, I agree with that view. Even, sorry, even otherwise, to my mind, I have not sponsored that event. Just even getting a priority booking rights because I have a VIP box does not make me a sponsored event. So if taxes to be recovered, if at all, they need to go back to the Mobile Credit Association and recover it and not recover it. The second uh, situation of is of Sanya Mirza. I have sponsored her for Wimbledon. Essentially, I am contributing to the expenses to, to participate in Wimbledon in 2009. Uh, and in exchange, uh, uh, she is going to display the my company's name or General Sanya's name on the kit and apparel. So, uh, they want to say that this is again, you are not sponsoring an event, you are sponsoring a sports person and therefore this is not liable. But Sanya Mirza could be a brand ambassador which became taxable only from the 1st of July 2010. And therefore they said this is not liable in 2009. Group Parvati had a slightly different view, very interesting. They said this is sale of space. <laughs> <laughs> then they said no it is not. But uh, in some foreign countries you do have where people will charge you to wear a particular t-shirt with your uh, you know, name or put a particular, uh, you know, when they are walking, put a board and put your name or some address on your uh, on the board. I don't know how that is to be treated, but they eventually said that this is more in the nature of brand ambassador again and therefore this is not a transaction of sponsorship. 
things. How is that told you the sale of space means some satellite in the space? <laughs> <laughs> if you ignore the first circular of 94, that magazine is a space. Because nobody can understand what the meaning of sale of space is. <laughs> you first for a minute take out of your mind the 94 circular that newspaper advertisements is sale of space, not advertisement. If that circular is taken out of your mind, I don't think anybody can attribute any meaning to the word sale of space. <laughs> We are so conditioned by the circular of 94, therefore we understand sale of space means uh, advertisement being displayed in the theater, etc. So, sale of space also can be looked at from a different view. If I go to an advertising agency, say this is an advertisement, put it up on that billboard. You never call it, call it sale of space, sir. If you say call it display of advertising. Huh. But if I go, if I go for sale of space, <laughs> such a misleading thing, <laughs> and we are all used to it because we have conditioned our mind to the 90% <laughs> circle. Yeah. There are also some contracts which say, I will take that report for two months. Then it's not me who decides whether I put up an advertisement or not. It of course, there is anything. A, I have only objected to the word sales. Yeah. 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 It's a funny word. <laughs> there is also payments to the Maricom Boxing Academy for uh, branding and promotional activities and some reimbursement of some fees for Indian Boxing Federation membership. Again, both of the groups have rightly interpreted that these are not. Really, sponsorship services, they are not in relation to events and they were not allowed in the actual general. These are all pre 2012, no, sir. Sorry? These are all pre 2012. These are also after 2012 because after 2012, only sponsorship services are taxable. So, sorry, uh, and after 2012, also sponsorship services are separate distinction, no? Separate. In, uh, no, there is there is no definition of sponsorship now. So sponsorship is not defined, but the question is then, what do you mean by sponsorship? Do you need to restrict it somewhere or not? And therefore, the way the old definition was, the way the Oxford Dictionary says, it is more in relation to an event, and every transaction for which you, uh, may not become, or every contribution may not become a sponsorship. The first situation was when you were paying 10 lakh rupees for naming North, a uh, women's North India Boxing Championship after the founder, Mr. Jelmiss. Clearly, it's a transition of processing event on which there will be a liability of payment of service tax. Both those groups, Divan and Parman, and uh, are giving the right uh, answer. There is, of course, a mega exemption, serial number 11, where certain anti uh, organizations, when they organize events, there is an sports event, there is an exemption. You need to go and look, uh, examine whether these are covered under this particular exemption or not. Otherwise, it will make no difference on reverse charge, etc. now. Reverse charge, positive, positive. 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 Positive